I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm glad for the few of you that are here. And I really wish that we encourage our brothers and sisters that we don't see on Sunday and encourage them to, to, to because they're really missing something when they don't uh, get here. I, I, I know that, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm here on Sunday morning and I look like I've been at, at, at the football game, the Detroit Lions football game, eyes all red like I stayed up all night. But that's what I did. I stayed up all night just for you, praying and asking God to help me tell them what you want them to hear. I'm not interested. I'm too old to put on a show. I'll probably never preach like Paul and I'll never sing like an angel, but I'll be obedient to God to, to say what he wants me to say. And so I'm convinced that when we come here on Sunday morning, certain people that the devil may uh, mess with them and tell them you don't have to be there today or you shouldn't go there. Things are not going right. Don't go. The devil just trying to cheat them. Pray for them because I know that I have a word from God that came from God. I know uh, uh, in each weekend when we pastors, when we put that time in there, we, we, you know, we don't do it to put on a show as much as we want to please God. We want you to hear what God is saying, and we know that if God bless you, there's success in what we do. If God helps you, and blessings may not always be in the form of a new house or a new car, and maybe just answer that question that's been holding you back. There's a place that God is trying to get you, and I say this all the time, and you may, and I'll keep saying it, that you have to learn the combination to that treasure chest that God is trying to open in your life. The treasure may not necessarily be a million dollars. It, it may just be health in your family. People don't realize that uh, uh, um, uh, 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 good health is, is, is a blessing from God. Uh, 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 that's prosperity. Prosperity is not always a Cadillac. It's prosper in all things, in your health, in your, your mentality, your mind. Able, it's a blessing to be able to think straight. And, 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 and I'm really learning that as I get older now, and as I get in my 60s, that I'm like uh, forgetting things, and I'm like, that, that's the worst part of getting older with me. That I didn't expect all these changes to take place. You know, did I say that? And Jenna said, well, you said that last, an hour ago. Or where did I sit my keys? You know, the things that I, I just took for granted down through the years. I was sitting on the, in my lazy boy at home watching uh, uh, um, some uh, uh, videos of, of some preaching. And, 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 and I began to feel like a, a, a little cramp in my neck. And, and, and it's a little breeze going on. And, and, and then I thought about, that's all about getting old. We, I'm not 21 years old anymore. I'm not 23 anymore, you know. Uh, the, the, and so th that kind of caught me off guard. I, I knew that I had to live and get older, but I just didn't think I was going to change like that. I, my mind still feels, you know, I, I still feel like I can go out and play football. But if I jump up and run down those steps, it reminds me, no, you, you, you're not 30 anymore. I still feel like I can go out and play a little bit of basketball. And, 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 and the body reminds me that uh, you can't do that. And so, but, but I'm not going to do the traditional Sunday school for the next few minutes, just a few minutes. I want to exhort and, 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 and encourage you. And I, I may touch up on the Sunday school lesson, which is it's a very good lesson. Uh, is holy for a purpose. And, and, and it's a very good lesson as I t uh, gravitate towards that in the new year. I'm going to be teaching a lot on holiness. It's not so much as our tradition, but it's, it, it, it is our specialty that makes us special. We've got understanding holiness, understanding what he's trying to do. It's not so much as uh, you just need to be part of the church. God is, saying, God is trying to get you to understand that even if you don't make it to church every Sunday, even if you didn't quote a scripture this week, he chose you and, he, he, and you're special to him. I believe that everybody in this room uh, is here with purpose. And I said this all the time and I'll explain it a little bit. I do not believe that you came here by happenstance. I don't believe you just came here because, uh, well, I wanted to see my child in the play. This was designed before the foundation of the earth. Nothing happens that God didn't know about. God will do whatever it takes to get you where he wants you to be to hear what he's trying to say to you. Come on, somebody. So God knows. So, so if I'm correct, think about this. I want you to think seriously about this. If I'm correct at what I'm stating, that, that means that God wanted you here today. Whatever reason he used to magnetize and draw you in here, it was by his purpose. The Bible says that he knew about this day before the foundation of the earth. God was here on this day 
when you were trying to figure out things yesterday. God is not subjected to the law of humanity. Time has no bearing on him. Time is for you and I. God does not work in our human time setting. 12 to 12, 6 to 6, Monday to Tuesday. God says he's, a, he's already in your tomorrow right now walking around. He's that big. He's that great. He's that omnipotent. He's already, to, he's already you're trying to figure out what you're going to eat for dinner today. God is sitting at the table tomorrow. Now, that, that may not make sense, but that's, what that's saying is God is already there. There's no end to him. There's no start to him. There's no stopping to him. What happens tomorrow, you'll get there and God will already be there. What's going to happen tomorrow, God is already there. If I'm correct on that, then that means this. That means that if God knew that I was going to be here, there's nothing new happened under the sun. There's no coincidence. Uh, I just happened to be on the street and somebody just happened to hand me $25, $30. God knew. You know, uh, 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 I, I kind of got like that, and I'll get back to this guy. When I was in the parking lot at Walmart, uh, was it, it was Meyer, Meyer last week, Christmas Eve. And, and I went to put the buggy back and, 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 and in the, it was a little box like somebody with pink wrappers in it and it was filled with rows of quarters. And I was like, what is this? And you know, the first thing you do, I don't know why we always do this when you see a bunch of money. Because you know what you want to do. You don't even think about going there and asking somebody to lose it. The first thing is, this is my blessing. Well, why do we look around? We must think we you might be doing something that somebody might question. But what I did, so I, I, called, I called back in the store, and I said, did somebody lose a big sack of rows of quarters? This is a lot of money, and it's all pretty. And then I thought about it. The Holy Spirit said, you know, somebody is doing that to be nice. Somebody's paying it forward. So I thought, somebody's in the lot watching me. They left this big sack of money in the buggy that blessed somebody for Christmas. I said, well, you know, I'm not going to spend it. So I, I, matter of fact, I just took it in the house yesterday because I called every day back to Meyer since uh, Christmas Eve and said, if somebody said that they lost quarters, this is a lot of quarters, quite a bit of money, and the rows of quarters. So I want you to, to have them call me. And the, and, the, and the person at Meyer said, well, you can bring them in and uh, we'll put them in the lost and found. And if nobody claim them, we'll turn it over to the employee fund. I said, not... I think I'll hold on to them because I was thinking, I want whoever was trying to bless somebody to get their blessing. I was thinking, God knew that this was going to happen. So I, I, I did the right thing and, and, and uh, called them each day. And finally, when I called them and said, no, sir, nobody's called about, nobody left any money out. In a, and I thought about it. I said, well, it was wrapped pretty nice and it was cute little pink and orange wrappers and and, and, and it was left there. Somebody left that on purpose. And I, and I said, well, okay, well, this is my name and number. I think somebody was trying to bless somebody. And I just happened to be the one. God just happened to know that my car would be parked away from that sack of money. And I would walk over there and all that. It, it, but but that, that's another whole story. But my point that I'm trying to stress is that nothing happens by coincidence. You know, I, 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 I was... Uh, on my way, and I've told this story to our church that I was on my, my wife and I first got married. Now, first of all, I wasn't kind of holy. I, when I got to college, I was kind of, let me, can I just be real with you? I was kind of unholy. I was not separated from the, I did, even though I was born and raised in church, even though my father was a deacon, my grandfather was a preacher, my grandmother was evangelist, my great-grandmother was evangelist, my mother. And so even though I'm born and raised in a church family that kind of thought they were better churchy. I got off the college and just act like a fool. But when you think of it, when you keep this in mind, this perspective, that even though I was acting like a fool, God treated me like a son because God was already in my tomorrow and he saw a pastor. The folks out in the street saw a big sinner that liked doing whatever he wanted to do. And so I, that's why I don't, I don't preach hard on people and I don't, I, I don't, when I say preach hard, I, I mean, I accept the word, whatever the word says, but I don't get in church and tell folk, well, make people feel, leave here thinking that I'm better than you. Did you smoke a cigarette or did you do that? No, I've done a lot of things that have wasn't for the grace of God. I've done a lot of things that I'm ashamed to even talk about. I mean, you, you won't even get, hear me talking about some of the stupid stuff I did, some of the crazy stuff I did. So let's get that straight right, right up front. I'm not up here because I was so good. I'm up here because I realized that God had cared for me even when I didn't care for myself. 
That God had a better place for me, even when I wasn't trying to go there. God had a better plan for me when I thought. Of... The night I came into Christ's temple, the day before I was smoking crack. And I was like, they don't want me there. They don't want me. And so I was just obedient or smart enough to say, you know, regardless of what I feel, I believe what that man is saying up there. I got up and went down and wasn't because I hated doing what I did the day before. The pleasure of sin would last for a season, but it was a pleasure. I was getting pleasure out of my Newports and my crack and my Hennessy. I was getting pleasure out of that. Ain't no need to be lying about it. Keep it real. But I believe what that man was saying, that if God knows I'm here, God wanted me here. I, I don't even know what's so good about you people. Why would I want to be with you people? Why would I want to come here? And God said, there's a better life for you. But if I'm correct that nothing happens by coincidence and God knew that you were coming, then if God knew that you were coming, then God has the words that he wants you to hear. We can agree with that much. Since God knew I was coming, God prepared. And while the preacher was up last night at 3 o'clock in the morning praying, Lord, tell me what to say. You know, uh, tell me who to say it to and how to say it. God knew about you. God chose you. And that's why even when I was on crack, God treated me like I was, I was somebody that goes to church. And I wasn't going to church. And, 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 and as I said, when we first got married, I uh, told my wife, I'm going to take you out for, to uh, get breakfast tomorrow. And get this, it's, a, it's on a Sunday morning. This happened on a Sunday morning. I told her, we're not even going to church. I'm going to take you over to McDonald's. We're college students. So we, you know, a, 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 what they call it, a Mac breakfast, a, a whatever it was, a mix something. We were going over to get some Mickey D's. And while we were headed, because I was going to take her to the mall and buy her a little dress so we could start going to church with college students and all that. And I think Janet was only about 18 years old at the time. And that's a couple years older. And so we, we were heading over to McDonald's in the the little car that we have, the muffler just blow off. And I was like, wow, this, you know. And so I, I get out and, and I know how to kind of rig things, you know, ghetto rig it. I, I, I had a hanger in the trunk. So I took a hanger and got up under the car and hooked it all up. And we started, we on our way again. We turned the music going. I wasn't thinking about God. And the testimony is, but God was thinking about me. Yes. I was not thinking about going to church. But God was thinking about me becoming part of a better life. I thought what I was doing was cool and good. But God said, you ain't seen cool yet. You ain't seen happiness yet. And I didn't know that. If you went by what I knew, I would have never come to church because I, I wasn't having a bad time with what I was doing. I mean, I thought it was OK, but I found out that the wages of sin equals out to death. I, but I was having fun. I like getting high. And, 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 and we hook the muffler up and we drive off another two blocks and the thing blow off again. Boom! And I thought, oh my God, so I, I fix it again. And I, oh, we're going to be all right. Now we jump in the car, we get about three more blocks and the thing blow off again. Boom! I get up under and try to fix it and even hurt my hand. So now I'm kind of mad at God. You know, when I'm uh, uh, hooking the muffler up and the pipe fell off and my thumb turned blue. Uh, so now I'm, you, you know how you get, you, you, you say those words, you, you, when something happened like that, you smash your hand and go, oh my, and, and, and so, but even though I was that disrespectful to God, God was respecting me because he knew he needed to, or he wanted to, he didn't need to do anything. He wanted to preserve me to be what I am today. God saw a preacher when everybody else saw a drug user. You know that song that Marvin Sepp sang, when everyone else saw the worst in me, he saw the best in me. God saw the best in me. So, so when I hit my hand, I, I got so upset and, and you know, uh, uh, couldn't blame anybody, but it was just me and my little wife. So I thought, we're just going home. She's looking at me like, why you got such a temper? We're going home, we're not going anywhere. And so we, we, we go on home, but um, when we get home, Turn on the news and, and, and we find out right at the McDonald's we were heading to, that we were going to. We were a few minutes away, but the muffler kept blowing off. There was a young man my age, college student, just got killed in that McDonald's. Two robbers had come in there and took everybody hostage. 
I would have been sitting there eating my McMuffin or whatever it was. I would have been sitting in that McDonald's, and here I'm getting mad with God, getting mad with things because things weren't going right. But if I'm correct that God knew what was ahead of me and God was taking care, I just want to say this. All this year, God took care of you. You don't even know some of the things he kept you from. You don't even know when there's a traffic jam and you turned and went the other way and got upset that God was keeping you out of that terrorist or that, that accident. You don't even realize when the kid woke up in the morning, the child woke up and said, I don't feel like going to school today. You kept him home and you felt guilty. Come to find out something happened in the school that would have changed your family. You don't even realize that when you went the other way one day, you thought you were just taking a shortcut. God was keeping you. Now let me bring it home. He was keeping you so you would be who he wants you to be today. You know, they say this year there were thousands of people that died, but I was one of the ones that made it. And I'm not bragging as much as I'm just saying I'm appreciative that God kept me. Another day to see my children. Another day to, to, to go higher. Another day to make up for what I didn't do yesterday. God kept you. And, and so what I would like to just touch on, exhort on just for a few minutes, give me, give me 10 minutes and I'll be out your way. I want to talk about in 2024, be patient with God. God knows what he's doing. Be patient with God. God knows what he's doing. And if you're patient with God, God will take care of you. God will not change. One reason it's important to be patient with God is because you will never hear anybody in heaven or God himself saying, he got to catch up. He's running a little behind. God does things in his own time. Well, I haven't got my check in the mail yet. Maybe you're not ready for it. Well, I haven't got the new car. Everybody else is riding, and I'm taking the metro bus. God knows what he's doing. God is calling you to another place. In 2024, just open up to God. If God tarries his coming and there's no rapture, could be a rapture tonight, and we all, all of us that are saved will be out of here. But if God tarries there, I mean, we don't know based upon the signs of time. He's told, he's instructed us to watch Israel. He said, watch Israel, and that will be the time clock that will predict my coming. Are you watching Israel? It's getting close, isn't it? God said this years ago. Thousands of years ago, watch Israel. Watch, watch, watch that tree as it blossoms. So based upon that, all the prophecies in the Bible seem like they've come to pass. There may be a few other places that the gospel needs to go in remote islands. They said everybody on earth is going to hear about the gospel. I heard there's one, I was listening to Moody Missionary uh, Program and it said there's one other remote island or something that, that the missionaries are going to take the gospels that they didn't accept it when they sent it. But we're getting close to the end of time. Now, remember, I told you time is for us. It's just what you've been set in to accomplish. God is outside of time, outside of the start of time, outside of the end of time. Time is for you. You operate in time because our God is not subjected to uh, that category. He doesn't have to work in time. He's not subjected to the law of humanity. God can work outside of time. God can start working on, you wake up tomorrow. How did that happen? Because God was working on it while you were asleep. God was already there. When you're trying to get there, God is already there. One reason you must be patient with God is because a lot of people, and, and, and when you see churches not full for Sunday school, when you see people not coming to church, people have ought against God because things haven't gone the way that they would like them to go. And people, and then sometimes people don't understand God. God is saying, I want to get to know you. I want to get to know you. And, 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 and it would be wise to us and for us to say, I'll at least listen, God. I'll listen to what you have to say. And I might as well use myself. I can't, I can't preach about Elder Hiron as well as I could preach about me. I know if it had not been for God on my side, I probably would be dead. I know. I mean, I was smoking crack. I went through two years of an addiction, smoking crack. How does a grown man get caught up in smoking? Something like talk me into trying it. I was born and raised in the church. 
So don't think because somebody sung the hymns and knew the songs that they were better than you. They're not better than you. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so I thought, you know, I'm just hanging out and, and, and another friend. And get this, the friend that talked me into trying crack, he was a pastor's son. But yeah, he was a church man. And so he was up Sunday shouting and singing and clapping. But on Friday, he was like, try this, try this. My point is, God understand, God know that we all have a lot to contend with getting to know this Jehovah El Shaddai. We have a lot to contend with getting to know Jesus. We got phony people nowadays. We got preachers trying to be like the world. The world trying to be like preachers. We got musicians trying to be like the world. The world trying to be like the church music. Who's right? Who's real? Then you get to the place, I don't have time to go around there. I can do bad all by myself. But God's saying, I'm going to send this message to you today because in 2024, I want to put you on a level that you never knew you could be on. I want to show you some colors that you didn't think were as beautiful. I want to show you some places. I want to take you some places. And, and, and don't get upset with God. A lot of times people get upset with God because the way God's people, church people act. Because I could have, after when I realized that I was out there and hooked on crap, I started getting upset with the guy who took me to the party. Oh, hypocrite. I needed God. I'm talking about him. He should have never took me. But that's how the devil trying to mess up your life. Now, I'll say this. One reason the devil is doing that, and I haven't even got to what I wanted to get on, but I just I feel led to say this. I don't know who you are. You know, I just say what the Holy Spirit tells me, and I appreciate God cares for us so much. God cares for us so much that he'll pick something out in your life, and you will think the preacher researched your, your background before you got here. God says, no, I'm going to talk to you. And while you sit there, you know the preacher's talking corporately, but he's individually touching that situation that I went through this week. And, 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 and while you, 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 you see that, while you feel that, you ought to give God a chance. If you don't give him a chance, you're cheating yourself. And, 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 and in the 11th chapter of Genesis, God picks out a man that's 75 years old. His name is Abraham. And God promises Abraham that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a child. Abraham is 75 years old. Right away, Abraham began to question God. I'm 75 and my wife is 65. How are you going to bless me with something better, a better life? Have you ever felt like that? I'm already going through this. I'm already going through that. I'm already here. I'm already there. How am I going to be blessed with something better? God says, I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you want. And because Abraham saw things from a human perspective, he began to question God like a human that's subject to time. He'd been through some things and it seemed like nothing goes right. Everybody else getting blessed. What? Why we got this going wrong? God says, you know, I'm going to take care of you. How are you going to take care of me? The car broke down. How are you going to take care of me? The kids are talking back. How are you going to take care of me? The money is short. How are you going to? God says, if you learn how to be patient with me, I'll take care of you. Abraham, in the next chapter, Abraham began to question God. Do you know what my age is? God says, why do you think I don't know your age? I made the promise. Why do you think that you, you know, the 12th chapter of Genesis, Abraham is questioning God again. Did you realize that I'm not the one to be blessed? Did you realize you you pulling on? See, God will start pulling on you with blessings like he started pulling on me. Uh, you can be a preacher. Did you realize that I smoke drugs, God? God says, I'm not worried about that. You may be down in the gutter, but I can save to the other. I can take you up higher than you ever thought. Did you realize, God, that I'm not fully educated? I dropped out of school with the temper. Did you realize, God, that I don't have that great a job? God says, I'll do what I promised I was going to do for you. And so even, I think it's maybe the 16th chapter of Genesis, the same man that God promised a son because God promised him the son because he was going to bless the earth with him. 
He was going to sanctify his situation. Oh, now we're getting into holiness, and I'm, this, this is going to be fun in the new year as we go into holiness. Even the lesson today, uh, what God said, with the three Hebrew boys that we were going to study that we don't have time, oh, the book of Daniel is all about holiness, not traditional church. It's about being different. It's about, hey, we're going to stay. Can I just give you all a little hint of what's going to be tough? The three Hebrew boys that we were going to talk about in Sunday school today, about they were thrown into the fire. First real good picture of sanctified church. Sanctified. They were getting thrown in the fire, not because they broke the law, but because they were doing what other people weren't doing, or they decided not to do what everybody else was doing. They, they told the king, we don't even want to eat your food. We don't want to eat your steaks. And the king, and, and, and it wasn't against the law to eat a, a USDA prime rib, but they said, we're sanctified. We'll do different from what the crowd is doing. We're going to get into that. Some things, I, you don't have to ask the pastor, is it in the Bible? Or did you, can you give me the exact scripture? Some things we do because we're not the same as they are. Now, let me finish with this. Let me conclude. Because I know, thank you for even sitting here as long as you did for this, but I know that the enemy does not want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. I know that. I already know that the enemy does not want you to hear that God has a better place for you. you got to step up and take it. If you're not willing to accept, even though my eyes have not seen what holds for me tomorrow, you're not willing to give God a chance. You're cheating yourself. If you're not willing to go where God is trying to take you, you're cheating yourself. Don't cheat yourself. God has a beautiful life for you. And so when God speaks to Abraham, tell him, I'm going to bless nations through you. I'm going to give you a son. Abraham tells him, wait a minute. It's just humanly impossible. Now I'm 85 years old. I'm going to help you out, God. I'm 85 years old. You told me this at 75, but now I'm 85. Maybe I'll just go get my handmaid, my, 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 my wife's maid, and, and, and give her a baby. And, and it'll still be mine. And God says, no, that's not what I told you. And, 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 and I believe this was more um, a little later. He first at 85, he, he began to question, uh, could he uh, use a servant? But make a long story short, God told him that what I promise you, I'm going to keep my word. Now, it's very important that you understand that his promises may not be like he gave it to Abraham. He may not show up in your bedroom tonight and speak to you. He may not show up in your car, but God has put some things in your mind that you know they were godly. You know that God is trying to do something for you. He may not have sent instructions through a foghorn. God may have just put, it, put that vision in your head. Remember, he started off with Joseph with what? A dream. Dreams are not always that which you see at night. Sometimes the dreams start in the mentality. You have a dream while you're awake. Uh, and I know, Brother Cody, you have a dream of building that big old roofing company. It, start, it starts here. You've got to have the dream. Those of us that dream, allow God to put things in our head. Brother Kevin, you see yourself with that construction company and doing the quality work. That's a godly dream. The devil's not interested in you progressing. Somebody in here, you ask yourself the question, can I go higher? Yes, you can. Can I receive more? Yes, you can. You can step up there and be what you're supposed to be, what you want to be. So let me say this as we conclude this. This year, be patient with God. Because the Bible goes on, I believe it's about the 17th chapter of Genesis. And the Bible says that Abraham was 100 years old. And what it says, the first verse in that chapter says, but God kept his promise. What do you have to go through for God to keep his promise? God put that dream in your head. God put that thought in your head. God put that uh, a vision in your mind and God will take care of you. And so I will say this in 2024, let God do what he wants to do for you. Don't get in the way. Don't you get in the way. Don't you mess God's plans up because if you get in the way, you can mess your blessings up. Last but not least, I say it all the time. If God tells you I'm going to bless you over on 45th street and you get impatient, you over on 40th street, do you get your blessing? No, God does not deliver mail to the wrong address. <laughs> if he tells you your blessing is over here, your blessing is over here. It's yours. It's yours. 
Don't you worry about what the crowd does. And I throw this on you. I know this is going to sound kind of, if, if you haven't really been around us that much, let God sanctify you. No, I'm not trying to pull you into any tradition. Let God set you aside. You'll be okay. I never thought that I could stop smoking Newports. I, I'm just going to tell the truth. First time I get into an argument, I pull my pack of Newports out. My big lighter, because that calmed me down. I did not know that the Holy Ghost could calm you down. I did not know if you want to get high, get in Jesus. I didn't realize that. I did not know that if you want to experience a real experience, or I think about 20 some years ago, New Year's Eve, or I was on the dance floor. 20, 30 years ago, I was on the dance floor. New Year's Eve, talk about in church. I didn't realize that the saints could come together and pray in the new year and you leave there rejoicing and talking about high in Jesus. I did not realize until I started going. And I didn't stop dancing. I just changed partners. I didn't have to go to the New Year's party anymore. I just came on to the Jesus. I'm not going to say, I don't want to disrespect the church. I almost said the Jesus party. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, but I don't want to be disrespectful. Ain't no get together like a Holy Ghost get together. When I realized that what I was doing, it gave me some pleasure. But when I got over here, oh God, I couldn't see myself. I'm going to be in service tonight at midnight. I couldn't see myself. Been out on the dance floor. Once I got over here in Zion and found out how good it is, once I found out that I, it's somebody that you can talk to when everybody else turned their back on you, it's real. When I found out he answers prayer, I had some bills that were due, and I prayed to him, and he answered, he opened the door. I didn't realize that even when I got called by the CPS office, walked in there and they told me, we're going to do it this way. We, and, I, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wasn't saved a few months ago, but I'm saved now. Okay. And I raised my hand. The judge said, what do you want, Mr. Mellon? I said, that's not the way God wants it. I'm a child of God now. Send my kids home. Judge sat there and thought about it. He said, I'm going to change what I just said. The prosecutor said, you can't do that. He told the prosecutor to shut up. He can don't tell me that when you're a child of God, he won't look out for you. He will open doors that men will close. Oh, my God. I got, I got to let it go. I promise you all that I was going to end it. We're going to take a break for, uh, right before the kids play. But I just want to encourage you. Get what God asked for you. And you're getting it straight from, I'm not going to say the horse's mouth, because I'm trying to be very politically correct <laughs> you know, when I'm up here. But you're getting it straight from experience. Been there, done that. Been on drugs, been a sinner, been a liar. I'm not up here because I was so good. I'm up here because I can tell you the truth. I'm up here because I can tell you he'll save anybody. It's not how much you've done. Well, I've done some big things, but God got some big grace. Well, I've been a big sinner, but God is a bigger savior. Oh, my God. And he took me places. And now I'm so glad because I never would have thought when I walked down that aisle that day that I would be pastoring 20, 25 years later. I never thought. But now I realize. Now I realize that he kept me because he was in my tomorrow. And I would like to encourage you. God has kept you because he has a plan for your life. And he loves you. He cares for you. I look back and say, I could have been dead. Mm -hmm. I could have been dead. I, 1985, I was at my first job teaching in the Pendleton Reformatory. I'm going to let you go. Give me 30 seconds and it's over. And somebody can ring the bell if I go over. <laughs> 1985, I'm in the Pendleton Reformatory teaching woodshop. My first job in the prison. They took over the prison, the second worst prison riot in Indiana. Held me hostage 17 hours. I saw things that I can't even really talk about today without it affecting me. 
They took over the whole prison. I saw grown men get raped. And I had to sit there 17 hours and watch this. I saw people get stabbed. I saw people get beat up. Took a man up to the third floor, tied a wire around his neck. And I was there. And I often wonder, why did God keep me through that? Because he cared. He had a plan for my life. In my conclusion, God has a plan for your life. I don't know what you've been through, and I don't know where you've been, but I do know that God told me to tell you that he's waiting for you to come back to the table. He says he has a place at the table for you. God says that. God says he wants to bless your family. I don't know who you are. God says he wants to bless you. I don't know where you are. God says he wants to bring you to a place where you'll see there's nothing sweeter than being a Christian. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I do thank you and I bless your holy name because you're good to us. I bless your name because you always take care of us and you have the last word in our life. Father, I pray that you would help us to take your word and hide it in the back of our hearts that we will not sin against you. Bless us, Lord. Bless each and every individual here. Bless us as we go into our second service that we see the children put on the Christmas play and to be a blessing to you. Bless, Lord. I thank you for each and every person that have come out today, and I pray that when they leave here, they won't be the same. Now let your blessings be upon us. Now let your help be with us, and I pray your anointing and your covering, and I thank you even for this day as we dismiss and go into our second service. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen.